I'm back. Oh, what have we got this time? Oh my God, it's a ball break. Oh, sorry, it's a bass breaker. <laughs> yeah, actually, this one's very light compared to the other amp I recently reviewed, which was a 255X uh, from Marshall, which was a ball breaker. <laughs> very heavy. This one's light as a feather, uh, I'm pleased to say. But it's only got a sort of seven watt output. Now that might not be too good for some guys. Yeah, if you're doing arenas every night, as you guys do, <laughs> uh, this one ain't gonna work. <laughs> you can get some volume out of it if you whack a four by 12 underneath it and things like that, but it, it's finite. So, but it's good for the rest of us. You know, all the guys that want one of these at home and that sort of thing. And uh, I got this one cheap, uh, about 160 pounds or about $220. Now that might be cheap uh, in the UK and it might be expensive in the USA. You know how things go. So what we're going to do is have a look at this one. It's a class A amplifier. If you don't know what that means, go and check the previous reviews I did uh, regarding class A, what they call class A type of amplifier. And you'll find that uh, it'll be all interesting and good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about this grey colour. I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, get up a bit close, take the chassis out. We'll take a look at that. And then we'll uh, whiz through it, come back, have a look at the controls. And then we'll be doing a bit of playing as well through this one. Yeah, it's all going to be good. And uh, if you can pick them up for the likes of 160 quid or $200, give or take, yeah, yeah, you might want to buy one, especially after the review, or not, depending on what we find when we screw the lid off. Let's go take a look. Now, right off the bat on this back plate that I'm going to have to remove, you can see it's screwed in with a number of little screws. And as we screw them out, you can see that these screws are like wood screws and they go straight into, the, uh, into this wooden area. Yeah, it's far different than I saw on the Marshall recently, the uh, 2555X, where they had inserts for all this stuff. And, uh, well, clearly that doesn't exist on this amp, but then again, it's a cheap amp. Well, actually, it's about 275 quid in England, which is about uh, maybe $330 equivalent. And the feet on this thing, well, they look a bit like sort of nondescript sort of furniture feet to me, but there you go. I guess they are furniture feet in their own way. As you can see, the chassis is held in place with a couple of screws on the side and one on the top. And these are, if you take a look, these are screws that have capture nuts probably in the chassis. And you just pull them out. That's what you get. Plainly seen inside the, uh, the case. Is the tubes you got an EL84 and 212 AX7s? That's about it. And uh, most Class A's have a singular uh, power tube. The chassis sort of uh, lifts out, and uh, the tops actually underneath there. That's the back. There are your three tubes, transformers, a bit of a fuse, and it's all in business. But it's sort of fitted together like a a sort of square on the end. Uh, well, you can see it that end. So this plate just flips off. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws, and this will come off, and we can have a look at the uh, the intestines. <laughs> Let's go and do that. Well, as you can see, getting into this amp isn't too uh, too easy. You've got a number of PCBs. You've got the uh, this one here, which is all the uh, speaker out, line out. And foot switch. She's on a little door to board, which is fair enough. I'll try and get that out of the way a bit. Then we've got, I hate to say power board, <laughs> we've got the uh, main board, which is here. And uh, maybe we'll zoom in a little bit and have a quick look at that. But basically, you've got two preamp tubes, one here and one here, and your power tube, we'll call it that resides there which is an EL84. You've got an online fuse there. Oh, look, you've got a desoldery to change it. Fancy that? Well, as you see, in reality, it looks a bit scary that does. I can imagine that blowing and then, uh, yeah, basically you uh, 
yeah, you have to take it somewhere to get a fuse changed. Yeah, it's a bit basic that is, I think. Yeah, it's very basic. Yeah, okay, never mind, eh? Okay, moving along a bit though, we can see the uh, the power tube and its resistor there and bits and pieces. This is made in Mexico, by the way, or Mexico, depending where you come from. And uh, I like to see how they've locked up these screws, by the way, with a, with a sealer. It's always nice to see things like that. Okay, there's a preamp tube. And uh, not a lot to see. Like I say, it's, you've got a lot of these connectors as well, like this thing down here. They just push in and join boards together because there is another board, which is equally difficult to see and get at. It looks more like a power supply board, actually. So, looking along it quickly, that's the sort of level of quality that you're getting. It's not a bad quality, don't get me wrong, I mean, I've seen much worse than that. <laughs> I'm from, uh, from Mexico, but uh, yeah, this one's not quite as bad as it could be. Yeah. And there's a quick shot of the other preamp uh, tube and area. As I said, not bad quality, you can see the tracks down here. It's pretty nicely laid out actually, it's flow solder. Now this bottom board down here runs along uh, to about 70% of the length of the uh, chassis. And from what I can see of it, there's loads of capacitors for smoothing. Uh, there's some down the other end, we've got some rectification. And that's about it. So I would call that the uh, power board really. That's about it. Not a lot to see, it's just there. Oh, here's one thing to see, if you look careful there. You can see that it's... Uh, that's it for the rectification. No tube rectification here. Now flipping the amp round so we can see the other way. Uh, you've got this other door to board here. A bit like the Marshall really, I guess, but doesn't look as well made. Uh, here are all the pots for above, the controls are up on the top here. Uh, not much else to look at, You just a few ins and outs. And But again, the quality is uh, pretty good enough. Uh, I don't see any uh, real problem with that. Uh, overall, the amp looks pretty reasonable, actually. I don't see anything that's particularly nasty, for want of a better phrase. Remember, this is probably built down to a price rather than up to a standard. Some disagree with that, maybe, but, you know, if you sit and think about it, well, why is it made in Mexico if it's not built down to a price? So having taken a quick look at the chassis, uh, let me bolt it back together and then we'll go and have a look at all the features and things. Yeah, not bad, actually, not bad. Well, there it is back together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, looks like leather, but is it? <laughs> Anyway, let's take a quick look at the controls and the outputs and the rest of it and then uh, we'll come and have a bit of a summation and then you'll hear some playing. So let's take a quick look around the back. Uh, first thing that's obvious uh, in this area, at least is the CE approvals and all the rush compliance and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, don't throw it in your bin and all that sort of thing. Loads and loads of, uh, you know, uh, information about how, what standard it's been built to. This is a 230 volts uh, unit, 55 watts input, as you can see, standard kettle lead. The thing is, uh, something I didn't mention earlier, is don't try and do a conversion on this to, uh, you know, 120 or whatever, because you can't. <laughs> so you're stuck with whatever you buy. Just bear that in mind. And that was the same on the uh, Marshall 2555X, the Silver Jubilee had. That was... Uh, built for the uh, the current, or should I say the voltage used for whichever country it was sold in. So bear it in mind, there's no easy fix of being able to, oh I'll just this or I'll just flip that. It's not there. I'm moving along a bit, there's not a lot to look at. <laughs> We've got a speaker output which says it's 8 ohms minimum. 7 watts, 8 ohms minimum. Speaker output, da 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 da. So it's 8 or 16 I guess. So you pull, uh, your output will reduce if you take that to 16, or should do. You're going to line out. 
and you've got a foot switch which by the way if I remember right wasn't included it might have been but I've been around I've done a few miles and you've also got loads of guff about safety and security and all that sort of stuff nobody ever bothers to read do they well more importantly uh, you can see there it's uh, Fender Musical Instruments Corona California but it is actually made in Mexico like I said that's the bit I wanted to show you that's it for around the back okay well here we are on the uh, control panel we can call it that there's not much you want <laughs> never is on these tiny amps but you've got your input what you could expect I've got a treble boost here which does work I add it off I suppose it's a fender thing my game was uh, about there <laughs> Bass, middle and treble, and the master. I had the master cracked. I had everything cracked. It was all good. And uh, yeah, I can even use that uh, SL pedal on this one. Uh, also, it uh, does a really good job. One thing I thought was a bit strange was this big giant handle <laughs> on such a small amp. Uh, not much to say about any of this stuff. I mean, it's so obvious, it's well, obvious. <laughs> We've got a light as well, like Fender have, and a, a power. Notice there's no uh, standby. I've only got one tube, I guess, and uh, oh, it's probably all you need. Uh, a simple amp at last. Well, that's a quick rundown of the controls. We'll call them that. <laughs> it's a single channel amp, I'm afraid. What do you want for your money? Oh, got some red uh, fourth on it here. Yeah, so the bass break is just 7 watts out. I thought that was quite nice. EL84, yeah, it's sort of, sort of Marshall-y tone, but it's a Fender. Well, they were once like that, weren't they? Well, same design, way back. Well, very similar. So what do I think about it? I've played it, by the way, and uh, I do need the, uh, the SL pedal on this one. I guess for some guys it will be fine as it is. Uh, you know, if you're a Fender type of guy. So Fender had a sort of uh, a way of thinking with their amps. <laughs> and there wasn't that much drive for many, many years. And, uh, it's changed now, thankfully. But this one sort of harks back a bit to the era of sort of brownie sort of coloured stuff. Uh, that's how I'd describe it. Uh, a bit fiddly inside, but the quality's fair enough. You can't convert it, remember I said that, and uh, you know, you're stuck with what you get. I also like the furniture feet, don't you? <sighs> so how would I rate this? Uh, I'm gonna rate it at about a seven. I didn't like that fuse on the PCB that you have to desolder to change it. Uh, I can see a lot of you guys doing that. Yeah, not, yeah. So, so that took the score down a little bit. But overall, it's a pretty good amp. For the money and that's what you always have to remember like i said earlier in my opinion the reason it's made in mexico they're getting the price down so they're sort of pushing it down on price the quality's not bad though so it's fair enough would i buy another maybe well i would for 160 pounds <laughs> it's 275 pounds give or take for everybody else i guess these days this was second hand believe it or not so the playing's coming up any second, and uh, it's going to be uh, that way, yeah? But don't forget to visit www.tennymackenzie.com. I'll be reviewing this one along with the uh, Marshall 2555X. And the, uh, the other app that's over in the background over there, which will be coming up in one of the next videos, which is a, a Dumble clone. Uh, yeah, looked at myself. <laughs> I'm not perfect, but it works. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, until next time, yeah, hang on in there, now get.